5 p.m. <clears throat> if you found your scripture, if you would go ahead and stand. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord, and thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy to us tonight. Lord, we pray that you would, Lord, we pray for your anointing upon upon me tonight, God. I pray that you would touch my mind, touch my heart, God, to say the things that you would have me to say. Lord, I pray that you would open the ears of the congregation, Lord, that they would be open to what your spirit has to say to them. And Lord, we pray that you would uh, just be with us tonight. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> Jesus is the same. We hear a lot in our nation. We hear a lot about um, change. Whenever Barack Obama was running for president, or actually any president, just seems to be that Mr. Obama kind of threw it out there a lot about change. We need change in our government. We need to change this and we need to change that. And really and truthfully, Every president or every politician is going to tell you that we need change. We need reform. The thing is, they generally don't do it when they get there. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> and it doesn't matter which party you're part of, if you're a Democrat or Republican, whenever they tell you that they're going to do something about so-and-so, they're generally not going to do anything about it. Because the fixing to go on a little rant here, and I'll be done. Because they really don't want change. They want things to stay exactly the same way that they are. They want to be able to argue back and forth every day. And they want that money that's coming into them from different companies and all this other kind of stuff. Okay, I'm done. Change is something that God knows about. And yet, at the same time, he does not change. He does not change. God has not changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament. God was just as loving in the Old Testament as he is in the New Testament. It doesn't always seem that way, but if you read the Old Testament, God was just as gracious and just as loving in the Old Testament as he was in the New Testament. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter you were... if. <clears throat> it didn't matter if you're a Jew or Gentile. He showed everybody love. So God does not change, but we do. And we want this in this country and in other countries, there is this loud call for changes. Changes in the way that we handle our money. Changes in the way that we have church. Changes in everything you can think of. They just want change. I truly believe that some people want change just for something to argue about. It's got to that point. I just really believe that some people are just argumentative. And they like to fight. And they like to get in an argument with somebody. It don't even matter. They could be right or wrong. They just want to argue with you about it. It's not that they really want to change that much. It's just they want to fight about it. So change is something that is good in the Christian life. We should be growing. We should be maturing as Christians. There should be some change in our life. But not all change is good. Some things that you change is not always good. If, you, if, we, if I change my diet, it's going to be good. Amen. If I change my diet, it's going to be a good thing. 
it's going to be more healthy for me, and I'll probably live somewhere past 55. I'm 49 now, so just can't take it there. But it would be a good thing if I would change my diet, right? It would be a good thing if we changed some of our habits. Uh, so many hours that we watch TV, that would be a good thing if we cut some of those hours out. Some of those things that it would be a good change if we uh, got off of YouTube. That would be a good change if we got off of social media. Really and truthfully, I, as of Monday, I really would like to see social media just cut out altogether. I would just, if it went back to where we didn't know anybody, it would just be wonderful. If all I knew was you guys, that would be great. <laughs> I'll tell you, it'd be, it'd be uh, a less hassle when I got all these people de- uh, in my direct message in the Instagram trying to get me to look at their photos. And it's not a good thing, y'all. And it's almost on a daily basis. I have to block somebody every, almost on a daily basis. And I get tired. I just want to get rid of everything. Just throw my phone in the garbage, the toilet, whatever would make it better. But so... This, Change is good and saying sometimes change is bad. <clears throat> but God does not change. The scripture says Jesus is the same. So what about Jesus hasn't changed? What about Jesus hasn't changed? The fact that he is the Messiah and Savior of all mankind. That has not changed. He will forever be our Messiah. He will forever be Savior of this world. If this world goes on for another 5,000 years, Jesus will still be the answer to the problems of this world. He will still be the answer to the problems of your heart. He will still be the ultimate answer to the problems of this world, to the problems of sin. So he has not changed. He has not changed in his status as Savior. The Bible says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by him. He also said, he said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. He will always be with us even to the end of the world. That promise does not change. The promises of God are yea and amen. That mean, in, in contemporary English, that is yes and so be it. The promises of God. So if we are, we, are, we are serving a God who does not change, and he does not change his promises, so we can stand on those promises, and if he tells us that he's going to take care of us, that means that he's going to take care of us. Another thing that God that has not changed about God is his love for you. I don't care what you do. God does not, his love does not change for you. You can walk away from God and backslide. He does not stop loving you. He is continually. Whenever I was a kid, I, 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 For about three days, I said, I'm done with this. I was 15 years old. Something happened. I don't know what it was. I don't even remember. But I was just, I'm done with this. And for three days, God followed me around going, you're not leaving. I still love you. I still got stuff for you to do. I said, okay. Okay. You still love me. I'll take that. Listen, if he never called me to do anything, just the fact that he loves me is the greatest thing because he doesn't have to, but he does. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The world, that used to be me. I'm not part of the world anymore. I'm a Christian. I'm part of a different culture now. 
How many of y'all remember being in the world? So his love for us does not change. Now I'm going to talk about some things that some people say that God has changed on. And to be honest with you, I've found no scripture to say that God has changed on these things. God has not changed in the fact that he heals. He is a healer. He made this body. He made this mind. He made this psych, psych, psychiatric stuff in our, in our brain. He put all that in there. And if it goes haywire, he can fix it. God is still our healer. Some of you are new, so you, some of you haven't heard that story yet. Of Mason, when he was one year old. He was, at one years old, he was probably about as big as he is now. <laughs> he was a big kid, y'all. He was a big kid. He was heavy. He was a solid rock, man. And, uh, and you know uh, how you carry kids around on your hip? You didn't carry Mason around on your hip. Once he started walking, you just kept him walking. But you couldn't carry him very far. So Mason got sick, had a cold or something, and he got a fever, and he's had, he had febrile seizures, and we were living just down the street here a little bit away, and it was Christmas time, getting close to Christmas time, and he had one right in front of me. I, I was fixing to pick him up and put him in my chair, put him in the chair with me. And he just fell back. And I went, oh, Lord, he's, at first I, I thought he was, I thought he was hurt bad, but it was, he was, went into a seizure. So he called the ambulance because he wasn't coming out. And the ambulance come picked him up and they took him up here to, uh, no, the, the one that's not there anymore. Glaze General, right? Glaze General, Okay. I'm not from Belgrade, y'all. Y'all have to, y'all have to excuse me. Uh, Glaze General. They had him hooked up the tubes and everything. And we're outside. We're out. We're waiting. And the nurse, there's me, Amanda, and her mother. And the nurse comes out and said she knows all of us, and she said you better pray. You need to pray. It doesn't look good. Ooh. Well, that, ooh, that hits you hard. Somebody says your baby might die. I got up from my chair and I went outside and I sat down on the ground and I begged God, begged God, whatever I got to do, whatever I've done, I'm sorry. I was, you know, I was just like getting it all out of the way. But we found out later that baby's his age. What happened, well, let me back up a little bit. What happened was he aspirated into his lungs. So what happened was he vomited a little bit and the vomit went back into his lungs. Okay? So at that age, at a year old, what we found out was about 98 or 98% of the time they die. So while I'm outside praying. Amanda comes out a little bit later. She's out praying with me. And the scripture came to me, Psalm 118. He shall not die, but live. He shall not die but live. And I said, that's it right there. That's all I need right there. 
And I went from he's going to die and begging God to, to heal my baby to he's healed, he's done. And then they came out and said, well, he's stable enough to transport him to a hospital over in West Palm. There he is. He's still here. That was not, listen guys, listen guys, I don't believe that, I don't believe that was a work of God. When you got a 1% chance in Belglade, Amanda likes to, Amanda likes to say about uh, Lakeside, she says, you go in, you go in with a, a, a urinary tract infection and don't come out. What's that? It was about the same way at Glaze General there. So God worked in a lot and he spoke to me, he spoke to my heart and said, he's going to be okay. God healed Mason for a purpose. It was to bring glory to God. And if God heals you, it is not for you to just keep going with your life. It is to testify to other people. This is what God done for me. God is a healer. God is a healer. He is a healer of the physical body, and he is also a healer of the mind. He is a healer of the spirit. Whenever you give your life to Christ, there's some people, they, they still have some baggage in their mind and they still have some, some things that just go on in their life and, they, and they're just hard things. But God, whatever is going on in your life right now that's hard, whatever the devil keeps telling you in your mind, God can heal that. He made it. He can fix it. He's not only just a healer, but he is also our provider. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. According, I like the, the, the last part of those, the last part of that, according to his riches and glory. God does not have trouble with money. Amen? He owns it all. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Actually, he owns the cattle on all the hills. God doesn't run around, if, if God doesn't run around going, Gabriel, Aaron needs 50 bucks and I ain't got it. Michael, Aaron needs 50 bucks. Sorry, I'm out this month. No, he is our provider. Listen, that job you got right in the nick of time, God got you that job. And he expects you to keep it. If God, listen guys, if God, if God, gives, you a job, if God gives you a job, don't complain about it. It may be a little hard to do at times. Don't complain about the job. Just do your job. Just work. I know it's hard to not complain sometimes because I've done it. I do, I'm really good at it. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't complain to Miss Jones about anything. But she's going to look at me and go, find your kids. Just keep going. So God, but God is going to, he is also our provider. His riches, not the world's riches. The reason for that is we, the world's riches run out. And he has a never ending storehouse for his children. Never ending storehouse. <clears throat> so God does not change. He has not changed in his love for you. 
He has not changed in the fact that he wants to heal you. And he has not changed in the fact that he wants to provide for you. Sometimes he provides by sending somebody with groceries. Sometimes he sends extra overtime. We don't like working overtime. But if God sends it, we should probably take it. So God is our healer and he is our provider and he is the lover of our soul. If you could stand, please. There are those who are here who are in need who need to know that God loves them. They need to know that God still loves them. That they need to know that God hasn't turned their back on them. They need to know that God will always be with them. They need to know that God is their healer. They need to know that God is their provider. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want, I don't want it to happen, but there may come a day in this country where God is all we got. God is all we got. Heavenly Father, praise you, Lord, and I thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that, that you have touched each and every one of us here. Lord, I thank you for those, for those who came out to hear your word and to, to listen to what your spirit has to say. And God, I pray that you would touch their heart, touch their mind, God. Lord, I pray that that their needs would be met tonight, God. And Lord, we ask these things. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to open the altars. And actually, first, what I want to do is if you need physical healing in your body, I want to get, I want to start with that. I want to start praying for those who need healing. And while we're praying for them, if you, need, if you need to come to the altar, come to the altar. The altars are open. And we have plenty of people who will come pray with you and pray for you. Who know how to pray for you. Who are spirit-filled believers. And so if you need, if you need healing today, if you could come stand right here in the